My name's Caroline Arscott. I'm Professor of the History of Art at the Courtauld Institute of Art. Um, and I work on Victorian art and science. And I've been doing research on Whistler and memory. Uh, and I find this uh, uh, series, in fact, of paintings by Whistler and works in other media by him um, on the single lightly draped female figure uh, seen uh, against an illuminated uh, background uh, to be very interesting in terms of memory. Um, and this particular painting that we're looking at here uh, is titled Annabel Lee, which relates to a poem by Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, Whistler was very interested in Edgar Allan Poe, along with many in his circle, including Baudelaire and Mallarmé. Uh, and he, apparently, his favorite Poe poem uh, was um, uh, on the topic of Lenore, uh, who also figures in rhyming uh, very deliberately with Nevermore in Poe's poem, uh, The Raven. Uh, and Poe is thinking about memory and grief and uh, the impossibility of relinquishing uh, a lover who has been snatched away by the forces of fate and um, jealous family. So uh, the figure uh, is almost spectral. In the poem, the lover goes to join his dead lover in her tomb by the side of the sea, nightly, every night, and he feels her presence in the stars and in the moon, uh, the stars like her shining eyes, he says. And so when we look at this figure painted here against the sea, this doesn't feel like a reminiscence of the living Annabel Lee. It feels like the spectral presence of something that's been lost that memory is seizing upon. And uh, there's a way in which an almost obsessive repetition of certain figure types and figure poses in Whistler's work might be thought about a kind of repetition, an exercise of memory and almost memorialization. Uh, I, as if there is a kind of doomy loss which attaches to his evocations of the figure um, in front of him. I think the sea in, in, in this range of compositions is uh, very much a, a single skein. It spreads across uh, the panel here uh, or across the canvas. This is, in fact, relates to another work which is in the Hunterian, which is oil on canvas. Um, and Whistler's use of very thin paint to uh, uh, produce his landscape elements uh, makes the actual layer of paint um, like a veil um, that goes across the support. Uh, and so when the figure stands with her drapery, uh, something uh, like a cape that has been thrown over the balustrade. Uh, that's another veil. And then when you look at the drapery that she's wearing, tied by these gleaming golden ribbons, there's yet another, even more transparent veil in her drapery. And we can think of these layers, actually, as uh, the moments of repetition in memory. Um, uh, and the way in which uh, the mind is built up of a series of instances which are layered together um, to form experience, uh, to form habit, um, and to form memory. So uh, I think the landscape is working with the figure. It's not a separate, it's not a, a figure with nature. Actually, I think the nature that's being referred to, if anything, is the nature of the viewer's mind. So we have here two works which we can relate to the composition we've just been looking at, uh, the Annabel Lee, uh, where we have dancing figures with gauzy drapery in motion. 
And there are different ways in which these relate to the idea of memory. One is that Whistler was trained to observe very rapidly and to retain uh, the visual information. Um, he studied a memory technique um, by, uh, developed by a, an artist in Paris, uh, Le Coq de Beau, Bois Baudrin. Um, and uh, this, one of the advantages that Bois Baudrin uh, drew from this was that you could catch motion and that you could catch the natural fall of fabric uh, and drapery in motion. Uh, so rather than uh, have a model who stands and is frozen uh, and where the folds um, fall into a static shape, uh, you could in fact observe um, uh, the moving of drapery and the moving of limbs. Uh, so memory is playing a different role here. I've been talking about the layering of memory, uh, the possibility that memory can supply loss and can in some way stave off grief. Uh, in other ways, prolong grief because while you're remembering, you can't forget. Uh, but here, the memory is of life uh, and is of action. And the, uh, there's a recollection of the category of figures that are uh, produced in this way, single figures in class classical drapery, in motion, or standing uh, against a balustrade. Uh, but the, uh, the memory uh, seems to be um, uh, less bitter, perhaps, uh, and uh, the sense of the, of the, the presence of the person uh, more intense in this late, late phase of Whistler's work.